So my name is uh, my name is Charlie Starkman. I'm a staff psychologist and the outreach coordinator at um, Counseling and Psychological Services or CAPS at U of M Dearborn. And I'm joined today by. <laughs> Hi, my name is Lucine Hambartsumian, and I'm a master level psychologist and group therapy coordinator. I work at Counseling and Psychological Services at the University of Michigan Dearborn, and today we will provide workshop together with my colleague Charlie. And we will talk about relationship and family support struggles while we're socially distancing. Now, Everyone is impacted by pandemic and some, some of us more uh, drastically, some less, but everyone is right now experiencing a lot of major challenges. And unfortunately for some uh, families, uh, it can be losses of their loved ones, significant ones. Some families, they are experiencing financial losses or unemployment. And in general, now we are living in some kind of situation which was so unusual and unpredictable for most of us. And many people, when things started, we were not prepared how to handle and manage those challenges. And how we can keep our families and relationship inside of family system um, less stressful and more healthy. We need to pay attention if everyone is connected, even if it's difficult for us, but we need to maintain connection with each other, trying to find time for each other. We need to be more flexible and try to modify our routines. Maybe something what we were doing before and it was very normal for us, right now it doesn't going to work the same way. And it's important to modify those routines and give time for each other and try to listen each other needs what can be done to reduce that stress or anxiety what mm, our family members may experience uh, trying to limit exposure to media coverage especially for young children because many uh, things that are presented there it's uh, anxiety provoking it's fear provoking it's maybe frustrating irritating even anger provoking type of information when you feel like you don't have any control over things that are happening and some of those concepts is not easy to comprehend for young children that's why they need to be uh, protected from this type of information and you need to try to talk with them according to their level of comprehension and age what they can accept and understand if you faced major losses you need to take the time to deal with your loss sadness pain and sorrow you cannot deny and ignore your feelings you need to take the time because if you're a parent and you're in, in your role that you need to take care of other family members you need to take the time and talk about your feelings be able to express your feelings and pain the new normal that we call right now can be extremely challenging for all of us because if before our house it was place that we were able to go and relax after busy work day right now our household it's a place that we share our offices if we work remotely uh, our kids they need to study remotely online and college students too it's a totally different place and this cannot be for us um, something that we can get adjusted easy but we're trying to adjust that's why the new normal it can be very very challenging because it's change our living style it changing the dynamic of the family interactions help your family engage in fun and meaningful activities even we are going through this type of time but it's very important for all of us to find that special time when we may get bonded because what family gives us is gives us sense of bonding it gives us sense of love welcoming attachment this is what is happening in families which considers being healthy and strong family and some families that they were experiencing already relational difficulties and a lot of tension and conflicts 
unfortunately, this situation was like a magnifier. It intensified many issues and problems, especially if family faced also drastic losses like unemployment or financial major challenges. That's why it's very important for all of us to exercise our mind and body, which means we need to find time for rest, time for break if we are working from home, time to have uh, moments for fresh air, being able to go outside if weather is nice and try to spend some time definitely taking in consideration the social healthy distancing that we need to keep from others, trying to exercise, trying to be mindful, trying to let yourself to validate your feelings, which means exercising your mind and body. Now, I would like uh, to talk about what we can do to reduce our relational tension during COVID-19 crisis. Because again, it's normal that you're experiencing tension, but it, it's some kind of tips uh, and uh, regulations that we can use in our family system to help ourselves to manage that. First, we need to try to acknowledge that time alone can be healthy and normal. It doesn't mean if you are trying to spend time alone, it's wrong. No, it's normal. And if your family members tells you that they would like to have the time, it doesn't mean they, they are rejecting you. It doesn't mean they don't want to spend time. No, it's their need for solitude. Everyone has a need to be alone for some time. And in families, we know it's a time when we are together. It helps us to have that sense of togetherness. And it's time when we are alone. And before, when we had our life, this is how it was because we were spending some time at work, at school, in colleges. And during evening hours, weekends, we were together. But now we're always 24 hours, seven days, we are spending time in the same space. Recognize that you can be overly sensitive to small irritations, that now you're reacting differently than before. Your emotions sometimes can be a little bit uncontrollable and you, you're showing that reaction. Recognize and try to be aware about your uh, emotions and the way how you're behaving with your family members. And if you need some type of support, talk with them because open communication is always helping. And plus you need to be aware how you're talking with your family members. Look for ways to be constructive. Yeah, it's very difficult time, but instead of always uh, noticing some kind of negative things what is happening inside of the family and outside, try to see what is there that you think you can manage? Because we need to try to think that our busy life and hectic life that all of us we have, maybe for some uh, people and not maybe some, I think for many people, it gives opportunity to spend more time with their children. Now they don't need constantly to run for different activities when they are also tired. Now they can have some quality time with each other. Try to notice those things with all those changes, what is there that your family can benefit? Acknowledge the positive action of others. If someone is helping you and you didn't ask like your child or your spouse, try to acknowledge this, show your appreciation, show your gratefulness. If you know that you have done something wrong, like you overreacted or you were not as fair and you were critical or judgmental toward your children or spouse, apologize. The power of apology can improve many things when we are experiencing tension and when we are under the stress. And honestly talk that it was reaction because you were triggered, you were going through stresses. That's why you were unfair or judgmental toward your child. Talk about those things because it will help to improve tension. Use time out to stop escalation of the conflict. If you feel like the conversation is not going the right way and both you are trying to blame each other, accuse each other or judge each other, and you feel like you are not able to solve the issue, please take the time. 
for 30 minutes, for everyone is different, maybe more than 30 minutes. And when you will feel like all those escalated emotions, they are a little bit coming down. Maybe this is the time when you can think how you reacted, how you behaved. And if you're able right now, go back and talk about that issue that was such a heated, uh, which created heated conversation for all of you. Remember that knowing, uh, yeah, Remember that knowing people all your life doesn't mean understanding them, especially relates uh, to extended family members. And you know, like everyone has a different values and we need to try to respect the opinion of everyone, even if the, their opinion or life values, like it can be political, economical, social, religious, they don't fit with your own values. Please don't try to change them. Simply try, try to accept and be respectful. And again, improve quality of time together. Find things that all of you can do and enjoy. Even in this type of difficult time, we need to have a place and space for enjoyment. It can be listening to music, reading a book, listening audio book, doing some kind, playing some kind of games together, even having like a dance party with your family. And you can use Zoom and other type of applications and invite your friends or family members and uh, maintain this type of interaction. I need to mention one thing that um, for some children, it can be difficult because they don't have understanding why they cannot see their friends or cousins, why they cannot participate the same type of activities and try to explain them why is it that it's a temporary thing, but right now it's for safety of their health and health of everyone on the level that they can understand. Now, what else we can do? Watch for your own destructive emotional memories. When we are under high level of stress, anxiety, frustration, it may trigger some kind of painful memories of the past. And if you're feeling like you're starting to experience destructive emotional memories and have ruminating thoughts, you need to pay attention why it's happening and trying to be uh, more wise by your thinking and behavior, realizing that current reaction that you're experiencing, it's triggered by your past painful experiences and trying to work. Yeah, it, it takes time, but again, try to realize that some of your thoughts and feelings, they are not uh, reflecting accurately what is happening. It's coming from your past. Listen if you expect to be here, like it's a golden rule in any type of relationship, especially for families. If you would like to be here, you need to learn to listen to your family members. You need to create uh, that supportive, open environment that your family members, they can come and talk with you and you can give your attention and listen to them. If your child would like to talk with you, young age or teenager, please stop doing what you are doing and give them that attention because they also may go through a challenging time. They also would like to express themselves and they need to have that opportunity. Validate thoughts and feelings, your own thoughts and feelings and also feelings and thoughts of your family members. They need to have opportunity to express them. And it's very helpful. Create open, uh, supportive environment. It needs to be type of the environment that everyone can feel like they have opportunity to talk. They have opportunity to support each other. Like everyone need, uh, if it's a household, like in household, everyone need to have some kind of chores that they are doing and it will help everyone to maintain this busy time. Be respectful toward each other. Use emotional intelligence. Don't try to guilt or, uh, accuse your family members don't play manipulating games with your children or spouse be emotionally intelligent it's very very important yeah it's difficult but you need to try because when and try to stop family drama because in some families if it's a big family they have several children 
they have uh, every family has their history but don't use family uh, drama don't let others to talk negatively or gossip about other family member you need to stop that because it will escalate tension yeah everyone is different even if you're in same family but your children may have different values than you have and you need to be able to respect that and give them space and give them opportunity for their personal growing explore what you ex expect from each other which means everyone in your family you need to have some kind of rules what everyone can do and your expectation they need to be realistic according to this current situation if your child is not uh, he he's not able to be the same way productive or active how he was before that's okay you need to respect that because they're also overwhelmed by things what is happening they're also overwhelmed by situation that they are spending most of the time in the closed space with uh, their family all the time and they don't have opportunity to maintain their activities what they had before cherish every stage of your life and each family member if someone is a, like all of us are passing through stages in our development in our family development it's very important to cherish and acknowledge those uh, stages and celebrate those changes and be respectful if you have grandparents trying to show that uh, respect or their wise life experience if it's parents who are working hard and trying to maintain everything you need to also show your respect and cherish what they are doing if it's your children for example if your child started to read you need to celebrate and cherish now he's able to read now he's able to do something and it helps him to move with with his cognitive and emotional development all those things very important and the biggest thing how i mentioned please take care of your health especially if you're in situation that you're a caregiver for your family member you're in situation that you need to take care of someone who is sick it's very important be able to take care of your health to maintain all those responsibilities hey all right so Lucin did a wonderful job explaining how important right now it is to be able to foster our relationships as well, navigate the relational tension that inevitably is going to come up during a stressful time um, like the COVID-19 pandemic. Um, <clears throat> I'd like to talk a little more just about conflict in general. And, you know, conflict is defined as a serious disagreement or argument a condition in which a person experiences a clash of opposing wishes or needs. So ex ex internal or external, conflict can be, um, can present itself in either way. So we might have, um, we might have an internal conflict um, about, you know, the way that we might want to approach, um, <clears throat> approach a difficult situation with um, with the person. We might feel inside, we might want to react in anger, um, but on the other hand, we also can recognize that it is going to most likely be more productive to approach another person in a calm way. It's that kind of emotional, internal back and forth that can, um, that can be conflictual. Um, the external conflicts are the conflicts that happen at home with our families every day whether someone's taking, a sibling might be taking too long in the bathroom or, um, you know, you needed something out of, uh, you need something out of the refrigerator and someone, uh, someone took it or whatever it might be. We are experiencing conflicts all the time. And, you know, it's not just right now at home. We also know that we can experience conflicts at work. With, um, with our colleagues or perhaps a boss or a supervisor. Um, we might experience conflict in the academic domain. So that might be if we're working on a group project that can often bring up a lot of conflict. Um, <clears throat> we might find that we start to um, build up resentment towards the people we, um, that we might be working on a project with or we might feel 
resentful towards a professor and we might approach the professor and engage in conflict. Um, we might have interpersonal conflicts. So with, uh, within a platonic relationship or in a romantic relationship, we know that conflict can present itself in so many different, um, so many different ways. Okay, conflict and conflict in relationships. <clears throat> Excuse me. So conflict is a normal part of any relationships and especially close relationships because when we are, you know, when we are with people that matter to us, people that that are extremely important to us, we often, you know, we often find that we take what they say to heart. It's important to us. And as a result, we might be even more emotionally attuned to what they're saying. And we might find that it's easier to start to get into, um, it's easier to start to get into a back and forth. We might also find, you know, we hear the saying, like, you know how to push my buttons, right? When we're around people who know us better than anyone else, they know exactly what to say that can make us tick, right? So especially right now, spending so much time at home, and if you're living with um, siblings or a partner or your parents, you know, you're around people who know you better than most. And it's inevitable that this is a time where there's going to be an increased sense of conflict and tension in these close relationships. But it is also important to remember that conflict is normal. Ultimately, two people or more are not going to agree or share the same perspective or behave the same way in a given situation. So we have to be able to normalize and accept that conflict is going to happen in our relationships. We can also keep in mind that conflict can be a powerful motivator to help make our relationships closer. And what that means is that we can express the way that we feel about issues within the relationship that need to be addressed. So that could be, for example, we might notice that um, a partner seems more distant and that might be of concern, right? And we want to be able to talk to our partner about what we're seeing, right? We might be, um, we might be in conflict with a parent who might not let us go out and do something with a friend. And this is, you know, especially difficult when we're living at home, even if we're, you know, technically adults, it's that, again, that internal conflict of, I wanna be able to do my own thing but at the same time, I also know that I'm living with my parents and I'm living under their roof and it's their rules, right? So it's kind of that back and forth, that internal, that internal conflict. Right? But ultimately, relationships can become closer when we feel heard, when we are able to communicate with others in a way that helps us to feel understood and taking steps effective actions towards being able to mend and heal from conflict. So we can also recognize that while conflict is normal, it can also start to become toxic, right? And that is when we know that we have to start to take effective action towards healing that relationship. Okay. And conflict resolution, as Lucin talked about, she shared a lot of really good relational um, re strategies to reduce relational tension. Right? And we also know that by practicing effective conflict resolution strategies with the people in our lives that matter most to us, we're moving toward building a relationship that is founded on respect and assertiveness. Right? And I will talk a little bit more about, um, about ways to improve that, um, that objective effectiveness in our next slide. But it's important to remember that conflict is extremely, it can become extremely toxic. And when conflict gets to a point where it has evolved into abuse, that is, that is serious. And that is when you, know, you should be reaching out for extra help and support. So conflict resolution. Conflict is common. And even though it's common, we're not often taught the best ways to effectively resolve it. And there are a lot of benefits that can come from resolving conflict effectively. Ultimately, this allows us to get our needs met. 
And when our needs are met, we're going to be functioning better in so many different life domains. We're going to feel more confident in terms of how we're functioning in our relationships. Our work productivity is going to improve and our academics, our academics are going to be stronger. Right? Overall, we are going to be functioning better when we know how to navigate conflict and we know how to be able to address problems that may arise in relationships. So there are a variety of conflict resolution strategies that we can use. So first is using assertive communication. So we know that to assert means to ask for what you want, right? And being able to communicate really from a first person stance is so important. And remembering that, you know, using I statements, I know I talk about this with clients all the time. If you want to assert yourself, you have to, you have to do it from the first person. You have to speak from that I stance, right? And also, even though it can be very uncomfortable, you have to bite the bullet and you have to ask because otherwise you are not going to get those needs met. Right? You're ultimately, you also have to remember that another person can't read our minds. And as nice as that might be, as much as you know, we would love at this point for a partner or our parents or friends to just sort of know what we're thinking because they know us so well, ultimately that is not a possibility. So to assert is to help our communication become better and to help resolve conflict so that the other person knows what they may be doing wrong to help the situation moving forward. Conflict resolution strategies can also include active listening and just being open. So what that means is being open to what the other person is saying. And that goes for, that goes for both people in the situation, right? Being able to really hear what the other person is saying, recognizing where they're coming from, really trying to get at the main points of what they're saying, and being open, recognizing that this can be an opportunity for growth is really important. Conflict is as painful as it can be. It's also a really wonderful opportunity for both people in an in interpersonal relationship or at, in this situation within a family, if there's a large scale family conflict everyone is able to grow and better understand the other's needs. A cool off period is so important in the heat of conflict. And it's important, um, this kind of builds off what um, Lucin was sharing before, that time out period, right? And remember that if you give yourself 10, 15, 20 minutes, however long you need to cool off, you still have to set a time to come back to the conversation because otherwise it's going to start to fester, right? So you were able to take that first step and step back, which is really important, right? But ultimately, if we don't address the underlying feelings that are still there, what's going on internally, we're not getting at every, every part of what happened. We're not fully addressing the issue. So ultimately, this step is very important because we need to take that step back, but we also have to remember to come back to it. We can't just we can't just move away. Um, we can't just move away from it. Conflict resolution also involves compromise. We have to be willing to compromise. So trying as much as possible to meet the other person in the middle, while also remembering that we have values and these are the things that help guide us in our lives, right? That keep us moving in a particular direction. And those influence the way that we approach conflicts, as well as our goals. Right? We also remember that there are certain things that we want from our relationships and certain things that we expect from our family or a partner or friends. And we have to remember that as much as we need to compromise, we can't completely lose sense of what our own values and ethics and goals are. And I'm also going to speak briefly about um, Dear Man, which is a skill that arrives from Dialectical Behavior Therapy, or DBT. And DBT is a therapeutic approach that um, involves balancing acceptance and behavioral change. So what DBT basically gets at is helping people to become more mindful of the present moment, as well as building on their ability to tolerate distress um, manage and regulate difficult emotions, 
and building healthy interpersonal skills. So dear man is a challenging skill, but the key component of good interpersonal effectiveness. Now I'll go through each letter. DBT loves using acronyms. So dear man is a way to build objective effectiveness. So what that means is basically getting what you want out of your relationship, being able to get what you want and need from another person. So the D stands for describe. So describe the situation when necessary. Um, you need to try as much as possible to stick to stick to the facts and look at the situation objectively, not necessarily going into feelings. We're not at that point yet. When we move to the E, express, this is now when we want to start to share our feelings. We want to be able to clearly express our opinions and the way that we feel about the situation. We want to share our beliefs. A, assert. Right. So we talked a little bit about assertiveness already, but remembering that assertiveness is asking for what you want, right? Making sure that you're stating that clearly, and if you need to say no, that you're saying no clearly. And assertiveness can be very uncomfortable for many people, but as I was saying before, if we don't assert ourselves, this A step is so important, if we are not able to assert ourselves, the other person or people most likely won't know what, what we're going to ask. So it's important to be, able to, um, to be able to ask for what we want. The R stands for reinforce. So that means rewarding the people who respond positively to us when we ask for, um, when we ask for something. So you, know, you might say, I will be a lot happier if, um, and probably more productive if I'm able to use this space to write a paper, something along those lines. But remembering to reinforce the other person because that's going to allow them to be more likely to respond to you and respect you more in the future, right? And the M, staying mindful, right? So keeping your focus on your objective in the situation. So remembering to maintain your position, being consistent, and focusing on the topic at hand, not becoming so distracted either by what you're feeling or all these other thoughts that might be rushing through your head that you forget why you are making this specific request in the first place. And the A, appearing confident, right? Using a confident tone of voice, having body posture that conveys a sense of confidence, and also being able to um, being able to be clear about what you're saying. So trying not to whisper, not trying to stammer, which often is very, it's very easy because this is a, it can be a nerve wracking situation, right? Sometimes even like giving, you know, giving a presentation or a workshop like this, it's very easy at times to, to stutter over your words, even if you've practiced. I'm speaking from personal experience, but um, you know, this is something that is very difficult. I would say also another challenging part of navigating Dear Man because it's not a comfortable thing to ask for what we want. And the last letter, the N, this stands for negotiate. So be willing to give in order to get, finding that compromise, right? And offering alternative solutions, being able to work with the other person to come up with something that can make everyone happy without sacrificing your own values and the goals that you're setting for, um, for yourself. Thank you, Charlie. It was so, so great. And hopefully all our uh, participants for this workshop, they will be able to utilize those conflict resolution skills and practice DBT, dear men, uh, to it's really good one. Thank you. And I would like uh, to talk about some uh, qualities of healthy and strong families, which is common for any type of family, because you know, we have different type of families. We have a nuclear family, we have extended family, we have blended family, where you have a step parents or step children, we have a single parent family, but all of those different type of families, if they are healthy and strong, they share some kind of common 
qualities. And it doesn't mean they are not experiencing conflicts. Everyone is experiencing conflicts. And how Charlie mentioned, but conflict, it's opportunity to grow. It's opportunity to solve something. It's opportunity to have better understanding of each other. And the interesting thing was that data was showing that all those different type of families, they share uh, appreciation, affection, commitment, positive communication, time together, strong coping skills, which means they are resilient. They are able to accurately uh, estimate the situation and make decisions and solve problems according to situation. And they have a spiritual well-being, which means they have their values. And those values, they can be religious, they can be other type of values that keeps all of them together. And hopefully, all of you can practice those things, being appreciative, being thankful, grateful for simple things, being able to express your emotions to your loved one. It's very important, even if you're very tired, I understand, it's very challenging. But if you can simply kiss your child, give a hug, or give that laugh or smile when you're busy, because even non-verbal language can show your child that your child is welcomed and loved. It doesn't mean when we are busy, we cannot do. Be having the sense of commitment, being loyal toward your family members, trusting them, because being loyal, they will trust you too. Using that positive communication, that you're not only judging or criticizing or constantly negative, but you're able to acknowledge their accomplishments, even if they are very small accomplishments. How I mentioned, if your child was able to learn to read and he's happy, he would like to come and read. And if you feel like so slow, I will read more quickly, that's okay give a chance to express your child their qualities. The time of together, how I mentioned, do different type of activities which will make all of you happy. You can laugh together and if it's a, some kind of sad moments, you can cry together and be there, like providing that shoulder to each other. This is what I was trying to uh, share with you. And uh, thank you very much that you joined us. And probably we are done with our workshop and uh, Charlie will share about our resources. Yeah, so we know that right now, this is a very challenging time. It's a uniquely challenging time. And, you know, thinking about today's workshop and the topic and about family and how to navigate the tension that might arise, you know, it's important to recognize that while these skills are, you know, are helpful and can make a great deal of difference, sometimes it can also be, it can also be important to remember that having a third party or someone to talk to even outside of the family is very, you know, can be extremely beneficial. And it's, this is why CAPS is here during this time and we want to be able to be of, um, of support for you. So we have our after hours crisis line. So after 5 p.m. each day, if you, um, if you need to speak with someone, you can call this number and you will be transferred to a licensed therapist who can, um, who can help you. Um, we also have a link to our remote workshops. So every workshop that CAPS has put on um, since the middle of March, I believe, since we began our remote, um, remote services is up on our page. You can watch them at your leisure when you are free if you can't tune in live to the workshops. And we also have an extensive resource page with um, links to different, um, different workbooks, different videos, um, different coping strategies to help you, um, help you during this time. And as I was saying before, during this time, it's very easy to feel that you, know, you might be alone or have no one to turn to, but we are here for you at CAPS. And if you're interested in um, in seeking services with us, or if you have any other questions, you can email umdearborncaps at umich.edu if you'd like any other information. So. Charlie, I saw yeah. we have a question here. Uh, I will check just a moment. Uh, someone is asking, what kind of activities can you do with your family? Okay, I will answer on this question. Okay. Uh, 
when I mentioned about activities, you can have uh, board games that you can play with your family. You can find the time that you can go outside and walk, keeping the social distancing. You can have a time when you can read or discuss books, watch a movie, things that we can do right now. You can have a time when it's a time you're joining your friends or your children are uh, joining like for virtual connection with their friends or they make a phone calls, they talk, that's okay, give them the time. You can uh, celebrate, for example, if uh, something happened like graduation, uh, you can celebrate graduation with your family and virtually invite your extended family members, grandparents, uncles, aunts, if they can join. Yeah, it's not the same how it was before, but it gives us opportunity to keep and give that sense of togetherness and have activities. It can be some kind of creative projects, like when you're, you can draw, you can paint, like everyone can do something what they like to do. And if it's a, again, good movie time, you can sit and discuss. It's a board games when families are playing together. That's why you can have your family meetings. You can discuss and ask everyone and see what everyone will like and enjoy to do. It needs to be like open discussion opportunity that you are not forcing what you like to do, but you're listening to everyone and trying to make that process enjoyable or simply how I mentioned, maybe it's an exercise time when you're trying to do uh, yoga together or Tai Chi or simply like exercising. If it's a good weather, maybe going outside of your backyard, there's jumping, playing together, listening to music or dancing or trying to have a dance party with your uh, family or also inviting your extended family through different applications. Hopefully I was able to answer and if you have other type of questions, I will help you. Um, I, I don't see, do you see any questions, Charlie? No, I just, I really like the, I like the suggestion of dancing. We have, oh, we said thank you. Thank you. We're, we're glad that you were able to tune in and we hope that our, our information was of benefit, um, of benefit to you. And, um, you know, like I said, CAPS is here to support you and please do not hesitate to, um, to reach out to us during, during this time. So on behalf of CAPS and behalf of myself and Lucin, thank you so much for, um, for tuning in to our workshop today. And I hope you have a wonderful day and that you remain healthy and safe during this time. Thank you very much that everyone joined us. Have a great day. Bye-bye.